Good morning. I'm in Kenora, Ontario. I'm here to pick up a load that's going to Brainerd, Minnesota. They told me to be there at 7 a.m. sharp. The time is now 6.37. Gates open at 7, not a minute earlier. We tried. Last time we were here, tried to get in a little early. They reminded us, no, no, 7 o'clock's the time, 7 o'clock. Some places you can't get too early. Seven is already pretty early because the guys there only like, they have like their their um, their meetings in the morning and then they start loading trucks. So let's go get ourselves loaded. I got to get the load tarped and I got to get down to Brainerd and unloaded today. Yet I have to be there by, by 4.30. It's about a six, seven hour drive. It's gonna take me about two hours to get loaded and tarped if everything goes smoothly and there's not a big lineup in front of me. Guaranteed I'm not gonna be the first one at the gate, but uh, we'll see. Well, maybe we'll get lucky today. It seems to always be who will beat me there. I don't know how. I'm the first one here. Is this real life? I'm the first one here. You know how long I've been trying to be the first one here? There's no one else here, it's just me. I did it. Oh boy, I'm so happy. I'm number one, today. <laughs> you guys have seen in my videos, I've been trying every time to be the first to the gate. I've never done it. It's a good day. <sighs> I was wrong. I got all excited too soon. I got into the staging area where we get loaded and there was already one of our guys there, one of my co-workers. He beat me, so I'm number two, not number one. One day Trucker Josh will be number one. Until then, I'm just number two. First loser. So anyways, this first loser is uh, tarping his load. Show you how we do this. So I've got this button here. If you guys ever come here or get to a place with a mechanism, something like this. Now I want to go and grab that tarp because I want that flap to go around the back. Now I'm the only one in here, the only loser here. Okay, so you want to hold it like this, drag it around. That's how we put the tarps on. That way we don't have to get on top of the trailer or on the trailer. See, I just bungee it down and this loser can get going. One day we're gonna be winners, you and me. We're gonna keep trying, we won't give up. And there's the finished product. Wrapped up like a nice Christmas present. Special delivery from Santa. That's me. I'm Santa today. For all the kids watching, I'm just kidding. I'm just Santa's helper. Santa's got a bigger beard than me, doesn't he? Don't tell Santa that I said I was Santa though, okay? He doesn't like it when I do that.
do that. I'd like to know why. Sometimes I'd like to pay proper respects to it, right?
the work's not there, well, that's okay. We'll just adjust our vacation, right? Start it a little sooner and go back to work a little sooner. The important thing is at Christmas time, all of this stuff that I'm talking about is not as important. We need to pay the bills, so yeah, it's important. But the most important thing at Christmas time is that you surround yourself with your loved ones, with your family, with your friends. Celebrate around a table with a good meal. And I really, truly hope that all of you are fortunate enough to be able to enjoy something like that this Christmas season. Because that's what it's all about best time of the year. Well, I called ahead and let them know when I was going to be here, and I am 10 minutes early. I'm hoping I can make it back over the border tonight yet, though. I don't know if I'll have the hours for that, but... We'll find out once we're out of here. It shouldn't take too long. Oh, they got the door closed. I wonder if they'll hear me coming. Rev it up a little bit. Knock, knock. Trucker Josh is here. tied down real tight and we did manage to fit a little bit of little bit of that sailboat fuel right at the back of the trailer just crossing into North Dakota the legendary we're in Grand Forks as soon as we cross this bridge come on Karen let them know crossing border entering North Dakota one kilometer, slide right on North Washington Street, US 81 BL. Nope. We're going to Flying J in Grand Forks. They are the winner of today's cheapest juice. Ah, uh, yes, all the construction here. They only got three pumps open. But there's one available. This is where we spent the night with that oversized load waiting for the technicians to come and fix it. Uh, the bolt started coming loose on it. It all worked out though. Nothing got damaged. And it all got fixed. That was last week's shenanigans. further my friend whoa 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 why are you coming backwards I don't roll back too far there driver and the pumps what's he doing what are you doing there and 
VA, I'm right behind you here. How is he, is he sliding his axle or what is he doing? What was that all about? Got that on the vlog. Yeah, he's driving out of the law now. He's probably pretty embarrassed, I bet. Or even worse, he doesn't even realize what happened. I bet you that's the case, he doesn't even realize. Was he putting it in reverse by accident, or? He would have backed right up into me if I wouldn't have rolled backwards. He would have backed right into me. I mean, uh, whatever, I avoided it. I, I back. I'm glad nobody was pulling in right behind me right away and I was able to back up. That's what I mean when I say keep your stick on the ice. You gotta be ready for anything. People pull something like that on you out of the blue and you gotta be ready to get out of their way. Well, let's see what they're up to over here. So how many pumps were here before? So now there's one, two, three. So they're gonna have three, four, five, six, seven. I think that's more than there was before, right? Added more pumps in. Look at all that stuff that goes into putting these things in, right? This is what I mean about electric trucks. Like, I find the technology fascinating, but all of this infrastructure has already been built for diesel fuel. You'd have to build all of these charging stations or fuel stops for electric trucks. It takes a lot of work. I don't think we're anywhere near that. Think of all the truck stops you can right now. They're everywhere. There's diesel pumps like this everywhere. How often do you see a truck, truck charging station, right? That's why I'm so against the carbon tax that we have in Canada right now, because the idea of the carbon tax was to push us towards greener energies, right? I get what they're trying to do. It looks nice on paper and sounds nice when you say it in front of cameras and stuff. But you're charging it, me thousands of dollars every month if I fuel in Canada, like thousands every month for carbon tax to push me towards what? What is my alternative right now? My only option is to pay the thousands and thousands of dollars of carbon tax, which I have no control over. I still burn the exact same amount of fuel as I did before. I have no other option. This is the only option for transport right now. That's why we're so against it. And as a New Year's gift, our federal government is quadrupling the carbon tax as if they haven't lost their minds completely already. They found a little bit more, a few more brain cells in there and they lost those now too. I don't know guys, make it make sense. It, nothing makes sense anymore. There's also carbon tax on our home heating. So what am I supposed to do? Just not turn the heat on? Is that my alternative? Not turn the heat on? I guess I could go to electric furnace. Costs a lot more money though. Like I was explaining in my previous vlog at home, right? Electric furnaces are much more expensive to run. And then the power grid, where does that electricity come from? In Manitoba? Sure, it comes from hydroelectric dams. That's pretty green. But uh, I get charged carbon tax on my home heating every month. And then get this they charge 5% sales tax on the carbon tax. So they tax the tax. Have you ever heard of that anywhere else on the planet where they tax the tax? Please, somebody, make it make sense. I feel like I'm living in upside down world. It's messy out there. But we finished our day in St. Agath, Manitoba, just onto the Canadian side just in case. This way, if they want me to uh, buzz around Canada here, I can just stop for my eight hours. Whereas in the US, I'd have to stop for my full 10. I hadn't split my sleeper berth there. So uh, I jumped over to this side of the board just in case they needed me to get going. It's the next morning right now. So far, it looks like we got nothing, but we'll uh, talk more about that in the next video tomorrow. Just give you a look at where I'm parked and how messy it is here. And I'll 
you'll be able to tell why our trucks are always so dirty. Blue Beacon, where are you? Why won't you build locations in Manitoba? I want to know. Asking for a friend. So it's just a small little truck stop, but it's everything you need in there. They got, uh, I think, four showers. Decent amount of parking here. And it's at a good intersection of highways. Right there, that highway over there, that's Highway 75. If you take it south, the American border is about an hour that way. And uh, it turns into Interstate 29. And that'll take you all the way down to Kansas City and you pretty much follow the same road. It changes numbers, but it'll go all the way down to the Mexico border. You follow that road that way. You go that way. That way is Steinbach, where I'm from. That'll take you to Steinbach. If you go that way, it'll take you to Winnipeg where everyone else in Manitoba is from. So that's it for today, guys. I mean, it's gonna be a slow week. It's the week leading up to Christmas, right? We can't be sent out too far because we're not missing Christmas. So they can't send us out if they can't get us back for Christmas. I gotta I got be back the day after tomorrow. And there's nothing for me. To I mean, like I said, we'll talk about this in tomorrow's vlog a bit. Subscribe so you don't miss it. It looks like I'm just gonna be going home early for Christmas holidays, that's what it looks like to me. Which is fine, then we'll just leave earlier after Christmas and get going. But anyways, I know you're probably watching this after the Christmas season already, but happy and very merry belated Christmas to you, however you say it. I know in the UK, you guys say happy Christmas, right? So strange to me, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you all. I hope you have a, a wonderful, wonderful season. Happy Hanukkah. I know I know that's over too. Happy New Year. All the other holidays that are celebrated in this end of the year. Hope you guys have a great New Year ahead. I've got some goals for myself for 2024 as well. Maybe I'll share with them with you in future videos as we get closer. But uh, we're gonna make 2024 a great year. We'll talk more tomorrow, all right? So remember, out on the road, stay safe, drive safe.